And, and the first thing that you might think when you see those big bags of money is, well, I sure can use some of that money, especially in the situation that we're in right now. But it's not a sin to take this for just a moment. But when we act on this, this creates a sin. We first conceive it, and if you look at the word conceive, it means to bring together inside. So when we bring these thoughts together, and when we bring those forth, when we bring those thoughts forth, that brings sin. And that's the problem with the rich man. He conceived this thing in his mind, and he went ahead with those plans, and he forgot one thing. That it was God who enabled him to do all these things. It was God who was able him to have all those possessions. Amen. And this is why God said, you fool, you have sold the desire of you tonight. Now I want to go ahead and, uh, if we would, go to 1 John, the second chapter, verses 15 through 16. 1 John, the second chapter, verses number 15 through 16. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. The lust of the flesh, Amen. the lust of the eyes, the pride of life. These are the things that cause the sin for everybody. Right. If we can avoid those three pitfalls, I swear, heaven will be our home. And this is one thing that we have to be careful because the lust of the flesh is, is, is one of the most powerful tools that the devil has. We are all wrapped up in the flesh. In order to get through our, to our soul, it must go through the flesh. And uh, if we don't have God in our hearts, if we don't keep God in our minds, the flesh will take over, and you will fall into one of the biggest pitfalls and you won't be able to get out of it. The pride of life, the things that we possess, the work that we have done, all the accomplishments that we have made in our lives. And it's something to deserve to be proud of. And a lot of us are proud. We have gotten, uh, I, the only thing I have is a high school diploma. And I uh, went a few years in college and I went to trade school. But these may not be great accomplishments, but I'm proud of what I did. And everybody's proud of what they did. Even from the raising of their children, they are proud of this. But we can't let that pride take over our love for God. If we say because of God that we accomplish these things, then we put ourselves back on the earth. We are back, bring ourselves back to earth. The pride of life, the things that of, of this world, uh, the cars, the houses, mm -hmm. the money that we have, mm -hmm. these are things that can snare us. These are one of the snares of the devil. The devil has many snares. And we have to be on our toes. We have to put on the breast, to, to put on the armor of God to protect ourselves from those things. Just a warning. Just uh, want to stir up your pure mind on those points. Let us be careful about those things. Let us always take an inventory of the things that we uh, uh, think in our minds and the things that we do. Now, I just want to touch on that to bring to this. I chose a man of God to base my lesson on this afternoon. And this man is Solomon. The man I chose is Solomon because he had a unique relationship with God. God blessed him with riches beyond any other king of that time. He blessed him with wisdom beyond any king of that time. And, if, and if, if he was blessed with all those things and still can be getting snared, ensnared in the will of the devil, then just think what would happen to us. Mm -hmm. I want to go back to 
journey back to the Old Testament. And we just want to go there for a little while. So the Old Testament is what I learned. But we're going to take it right back to the New Testament, so don't worry about that. Let's go back to 1 Kings, the second chapter. Verses 1 through 4. Now these are the days of our kings. Uh, David was, uh, his time on earth was going short. And he was ready to pass the baton on to Solomon. And we'll find in, in first, first Kings, the second chapter, verses 1 through 4, the, day, the, the days of David drew now that he would die. And he charged his son Solomon, saying, I go the way of all the earth. Be thou strong, therefore, and show thyself a man. And keep the charge of the Lord thy God, to walk in his ways, to keep his statutes, and his commandments, and his judgments, and his testimonies. And it is written in the law of Moses, that thou mayest prosper in all that thou doest, and whether so thou turnest thyself. That the Lord may continue his word his word, what did he say? Concerning me, saying, If thy children take heed to their way, to walk before me in truth with all their heart and with all their soul, there shall not fail thee a man on the throne of Israel. So David, uh, King Solomon, is being charged to carry on the works of David. And God was on the side, and he was telling uh, Solomon, that he needs to walk, continue to walk the narrow path, the, the, not the narrow path, following uh, behind the footsteps of Jesus, of behind God. We remember when President Clinton took office, and uh, it was after George Bush. And the, uh, the, usually, when they transfer offices, the former president tells new president, some of the most important things that's, that's going to affect his uh, term in office. President Clinton told George Bush that your most important duty in office will be terrorism. Osama bin Laden. Don't let him, uh, keep your eye on him. He's a dangerous man. He's plotting plots against the United States. But what happened? George Bush ignored these warnings. And if he had a heeded President Clinton's warning, we could have avoided some of the worst acts of terrorism this land has ever known. Young people, when the elderly people come up to you and warn you about things, tell you about things that can be pitfalls in their life, I behoove you to listen to them. Because they have experienced these things and they know what they're talking about. We want to go on to 1 Kings, the third chapter. We want to follow the, the life of King Solomon for a little bit here before I get to my main, the meat of my topic. We want to go to follow the, the uh, life and time of King Solomon. In 1 Kings, the third chapter, verses number three. Uh, Brother Reader, read that for me. And Solomon loved the Lord, walking in the statute of David his father. Only he sacrificed and burnt incense in high places. So far, so good. Amen. Solomon loved the Lord. He continued to walk in the footsteps of God. He continued to keep the oracle that God has placed upon David and the thing that David told him. Uh, the, the, uh, the only problem is that, uh, that he only sacrificed uh, burnt incenses in high places. So that meant that they were in open high places and uh, the, uh, the religious practice of Canaan could easily uh, come in and, and interfere with Israel's worship. So they had to just bear with that for the time being. Now there is a parallel between you and me and Solomon. Just follow me now. Solomon was Rich beyond measure of that time. He had wisdom beyond all men of that time. We all have our, we may not be as rich as Solomon, we may not have as much wisdom as Solomon, 
but we all have our limitations. We can reign over our house. Some of us have positions of authority on our jobs, but we can reign over those who are under us, have authority over people that are on our job. So if we can see a slight parallel there. Not like I say, we, we, we don't want to, uh, it's not quite as great as Sodom, but it, 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 as, as we are now, it, it, it is a parallel at this time. Uh, let's go to uh, 1 King 4, chapter 21 through 24. Solomon was a great man. And Solomon reigned over all kingdoms from the river unto the land of the Philistines and unto the border of Egypt. They brought presents and served Solomon all the days of his life. And Solomon's provision for one day was 30 measures of fine flour and three score measures of meal, then fat oxen and 20 oxen out of the pasture, and a hundred sheep besides heart and rebar and fowl deals and fat, fat fowl. For he had dominion over all the region on this side, the river from the type south, even to Azar, over all the kings on this side, the rivers, and he had peace on all sides round about him. Now Solomon ruled over a vast area, uh, one of the biggest areas of that time for any king. Uh, he ran he, uh, from the rivers to the land of Philistine and to the borders of Egypt. He ruled all his land. And because, and uh, uh, we don't own this much land, but one of the greatest achievements in most of our lives when we became ownership of our own, own house, we were proud of that uh, 80 by 130 foot area that we, uh, land that we had. And it, it made us feel good. It was a, it was a great, in this day and age, that is one, one of the greatest accomplishments that we can make. So we, 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 we fall in that category, uh, even though we not own as much of a vast land as Solomon did, we do own land, and it's something that we can be proud of. Okay, now let's go on to, uh, we're going to learn a lot about Solomon tonight, so uh, just bear with me. Uh, go on to uh, 1 Kings 4, chapter uh, 29 and 30. God gave Solomon wisdom and understanding, exceeding much and largeness of heart, even as the sand that is on the seashore. And Solomon's wisdom excelled the wisdom of all the children of the East Country and all the wisdom of Egypt. Let's show you how much wisdom he had. <clears throat> of all the children of the East Country and all the wisdom of Egypt, God blessed them with. Now God appeared to him, yeah, first appeared to, to uh, Solomon and Gideon, uh, and because he, uh, because of things that, in a dream he appeared to Solomon, because of things that uh, Solomon said in a dream, God was impressed with the things that he was saying because he was, his wishes for God were not selfish, it was for him to give a better understanding and, and compassion, and because of this, uh, God blessed him with these riches and, and, and wisdom. Now, because there was peace in the land, as, as, as read, because there was peace in the land, uh, Solomon began to build the temple, the house of the Lord. And this temple was a great building. It, uh, it was it was it was it was a, it was an uh, architectural feat. And after he began to build the temple, he began to work on his own house. Once again, sidebar, we all, most of us own our own home. And once again, a great achievement for those who have done so. Even though we just have an apartment, just moving into our apartment and being able to possess or something we call our own is a great achievement. So that's another parallel that we, that we may have with Solomon. Not as great, but it is one of the greatest accomplish, accomplishments that we can make. At, uh, at this time. Okay, let's go to 1 Kings 9, chapter the second verse. 1 Kings 9, chapter the second verse. That the Lord appeared to Solomon 
the second time, as he had appeared unto him at Gideon. Now this is where God makes a covenant, a covenant with Solomon. He's telling him what he wants him to do and what he uh, does not want him to do. Uh, he is a uh, He is uh, telling Solomon how much he loves him. And I'm going to go ahead and read verse 6 and 7. But if he shall, and he's warning Solomon, but if he shall at all turn from following me, ye or your children, and will not keep my commandments and my statutes, which I have set before you, but go and serve other gods and worship them, but then I will cut off Israel out of the land which I have given them, and this house which I have hallowed in my name, but I cast out my sight, and Israel shall be a proverb and a byword among the people. He's warning Solomon what he does not want him to do. He has blessed Solomon with so much riches, so much wisdom. And then he comes back and warns Solomon, you have all this, I bless you with all this, but this one thing I do not want you to do. We once again find out that Solomon had a me problem, he had a my problem, he had a myself problem. Now let's go over to First Kings, the eleventh chapter, verses one. But King Solomon loved many strange women, together with the daughters of Pharaoh, women of the Moabites and the Amites and the Edomites and the Zidonians and the Hittites. Now, once again. Me, myself, and I have a problem. Amen. You love women. All of us love women. Amen. Have you ever noticed that uh, last time he was in the mall, there sometimes the men walk around in the mall with sunglasses on? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you figure out that one. <laughs> um, I have a beautiful wife. Uh, she, uh, God gave her to me to uh, please me, to, uh, to, to uh, give me everything I need. She has the features, quality features that I see. And I should be satisfied with that. But sometimes we're just not satisfied. Man. We see something on the other side that we think is better than what we have. And then when we do end up with that, we find that it's the worst thing we ever did. And some women too, I've seen some women walk around the mall with sunglasses on too. I'm not gonna let the women off the bat either. <laughs> but the lust of the flesh, one of the snares of the devil, starts to begin to creep in on Solomon and cause him to stray away from God. Now God told him not to let these women turned his heart away from God. He might have been able to get back in the sight. He might have been able to get back in the good grace of God if it was just for the women. But the thing that happened was he let them he turn he let them turn his heart away from God. Solomon Uh, okay, Solomon, uh, and in and, and verse 8, Solomon, and likewise did he for all his strange wives which burnt incense and sacrificed unto their God. Now God had warned him about this. Now, it was mentioned earlier this morning about David. David fell into the same trap also. But David repented. He not only repented, he sincerely repented. But I don't see anywhere in the Bible where Solomon repented for what he did. 
God, uh, God was angry with Solomon because his heart was turned from the Lord. And because King Solomon did this, God took away the kingdom from him and gave it to his servant. And the servant was uh, Rehoboam. And after that, things just went down here. Now, we wonder, how can we prevent ourselves from being ensnared in the well of the devil? Well, I'm going to give you some answers. I'm going to give you some help with that. If you want to turn your Bible to Galatians, the sixth chapter, third verse. I'm going to read, read that from Galatians, uh, the sixth chapter, <sighs> verse number three. Well, if a man think in himself to do to be something, when he is nothing, he deceives himself. A lot of times we deceive ourselves. Of all the accomplishments that we have made, all the education that we have, all the wisdom that we have, sometimes we get that hit the best of us. And we start to deceive ourselves to the point where we think that we are uh, cannot be falling victim to some of those snares of the devil. If a man thinks of himself something, he is nothing. The minute that we think that these scriptures won't affect us, we have been ensnared by the devil. We can also find in Colossians, the third chapter, verses one through three. Colossians, the third chapter, verses one through three. If he be risen with Christ, Seek those things which are above, for Christ sits on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on things of this earth. If we follow this scripture, if we consider this scripture every time we become to the point where we think that we all that in the bag of a chips, it'll bring us back to earth. And finally, Matthew, the sixth chapter, verse number 19 to 21. All the riches that we have, all the things that we have accumulated mean nothing. Matthew, the sixth chapter, 19 to 21. Lay down to yourself, for it upon her, will mock and rust, go corrupt, and will thieves break through. Still. But lay up for yourself treasure in heaven, where neither moth nor rust nor corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Where your heart is, it's where you are. If you think that your car, your house, your education, Mm-hmm. The things that you possess are the greatest things in your life, are the greatest achievements in your life. And then when you think that you have achieved these things by yourself, without the help of God, then you deceive yourself. And I implore this church tonight, let us think of me, myself, and I. And I declare, you will make your own in heaven. What he's done for me And he gave me the victory